Hello, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to have Commissioner King with me, uh, who will present to you uh, the assessments of member states' national no, the, the member states' national risk assessments when it comes to security of 5G networks. And uh, the floor is yours, Commissioner. Once. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, well, a bit about a bit about the work we're doing on on 5G. Uh, each time there's a sort of step forward, a big step forward in technology, there's, there's a scramble to get to the forefront, uh, to get the most for your economy, for your society, and indeed for your standing in the world. And uh, this is no different. It's no different around 5G. There's the additional interest this time of security, because national security, economic security, security of our societies is uh, on the line as well. This isn't uh, a race where you want to be too far back in the field. And across Europe, uh, I think there's been a sort of growing awareness of how important it is to secure our critical digital infrastructure. From cyber attacks, espionage, other hostile uh, interference, from the question of forced transfers of technology against a changing global geopolitical backdrop. And so we took the initiative to suggest that on this question of 5G, uh, it was better to act together as Europeans to identify and mitigate potential weaknesses and vulnerabilities which could have an effect on how that critical digital infrastructure was going to work. Uh, and that was the thinking behind the recommendation that we uh, published back in March uh, which set out a European approach to protecting 5G security, uh, endorsed, supported by the European Council and the European Parliament. Because this time, it's more than just uh, updating the way your phone works. Uh, it's not like 3G or even 4G. It's a revolution, because it is going to be the backbone of our digital connectivity. Consumer services, uh, industry, critical services, all parts of how we live our daily lives. It's going to be the plumbing of our digital societies. And like all plumbing, like all pipes, uh, when it comes to uh, installing it, you want to get it right first time. Indeed, across Europe, uh, the digital plumbers are already hard at work. The license auctions are ongoing, and the deployment of the first 5G networks is is, is happening on the ground in some of our cities. Uh, and whereas with the earlier generations, 2, 3, even 4G, price was a key criterion, uh, this time with 5G, we want to put security squarely at the heart of decision making. This need for sort of a collective approach, collective action, uh, given that we're talking about European infrastructure, was at the heart of the recommendation, which set out, as you remember, uh, a three-phase process to get all member states working together to identify the risks, to formulate mitigation strategies, to share those to arrive at an EU-wide risk assessment and a toolbox of responses. What we're doing today is marking the end of the first phase of that process, uh, which was uh, member states undertaking to carry out national risk assessments to identify uh, technological risk and vulnerabilities in different parts of uh, the future network, core and uh, radial, as well as vulnerabilities arising from the applicable legal regime and other supply chain risk factors in potential suppliers and to look at their first mitigation measures. Uh, as of right now, standing in front of you, uh, 24 of the member states have submitted their full risk assessments, and we're expecting to receive the remaining four very shortly. Uh, this work's been done jointly by the member states, together uh, with the Commission and our EU Agency for Cybersecurity, in a dedicated group of cybersecurity experts across, from across the EU. And together today with Commissioner Gabriel, uh, I want to welcome the progress uh, that we've made so far. It's an excellent start, 
but we need now to continue to build upon it. Uh, we're going to begin the next stage in the process, analysing together the risk assessments that have been submitted by the Member States, using them to draw up an EU-wide risk assessment, prioritising the most sensitive and vulnerable aspects of 5G networks across uh, Europe. Uh, and we'll do that by the beginning of October. Meanwhile, of course, some action is already, security action, uh, is already being taken at the national level, and, and we welcome that. In France, legislation on network security is being discussed by the National Assembly and the Senate, uh, including the proposal floated there of prior authorizations. Uh, and in the UK, a government review is planned to provide an overview of the risks arising from telecoms equipment supply chains and to help set objective security requirements uh, on 5G. In October, we will come again uh, and will report on the progress that has been made by that stage. And at the same time, we'll be launching the third stage in this collective work to develop, by the end of the year, a toolbox of appropriate, effective and proportionate risk management measures that can be taken at both at national level and together at the European level to mitigate security threats and ultimately to develop common minimum standards for the cybersecurity of 5G networks across the EU. As we've said before, I'll say it again today, we're doing this because it's in our European interests to do so. Not because someone else has asked us to, or to target particular services or suppliers at the outset. Because of what is at stake for European networks, we need to look together at the possible risks and vulnerabilities, work out how best to manage and mitigate them, and, if necessary, reach a view on whether particular products, services or suppliers are sufficiently safe for us, want, for us to want to, to use them in building these future networks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner King. Uh, so now we have uh, time for a few questions, and uh, we have also experts in the room in case you have uh, questions that are more of a technical nature. Let's start with 